Now I know for many of you out there it's not a great time to be building a gaming PC and that's because the prices of things have started to increase. Things like cases, coolers, CPU fans, AIOs, all that kind of stuff has started to creep up a little bit in a trend that started with GPUs and CPUs and I know that things like SSDs and RAM have actually plummeted down in price, so they're pretty decent. It isn't helping when you come to do the rest of your build, but there are companies out there that are holding the line. And we recently took a look at some fans from Thermorite that actually showed this. So we reached out to Thermorite to see what else they had, and they sent this along. And you guys are not going to believe how much this costs. So I know how crazy it is at the moment when it comes to the prices of components. Graphics cards manufacturers are releasing the new generations and they are costing a little bit more than they used to. It's also happening on the CPU front, not necessarily in terms of higher prices for the tier CPUs. They're kind of lacking in actually lowering any of those entry level and budget things. But when it actually comes to building a PC, there's more components than just those. You'll obviously need a case, a power supply, cooling solutions and all that kind of stuff and although cases and power supplies seem to be on the increase companies like Thermorite have still got your back when it comes to cooling now the fans that we looked at recently were from Thermorite and they're actually the same as what's included in one of these so if the fans are that good a quality I'm hoping the all-in-one cooler as well now this is the Thermorite Frozen Note 360 in white it also comes in black and I thought today we'd go through and have a look to see what you actually get and see what kind of quality it is. Now the prices on these are actually super cheap. You're not going to find anything around this range. I've actually been looking for CPU coolers, particularly AIOs for a while now. And I just started to notice that they've actually increased in price, particularly for those well-known brands. Whereas once you would actually pay around £80 for a pretty decent 240mm AIO, you know, looking at about 130 which which is kind of insane really because you can just get an air cooler which will perform just as well for a lot cheaper but when Thermalright offered to send this across we thought you know what let's give it a go because it's actually a pretty decent price the prices on these at the moment are around 68 pounds and we'll drop some links in the description below so you guys can go check it out but i couldn't believe it when i actually saw that price i thought it was definitely worth doing something on as far as packaging goes it's actually beautifully presented it's in a pretty standard box that all aio coolers come in and it's pretty decent looking. It's got everything that you need. It's got a picture of all the components on the back. It's got all the specs on the sides and we'll just run through a couple of those specs now for you. So the model number is a Frozen Note 360 white ARGB and that's because it comes with ARGB lighting and we'll see that once we open it. We have a radiator dimension of 3971027, which obviously means it's a 360 millimeter radiator. That's actually pretty decent. It's going to fit up to three 120 millimeter fans, and particularly for 68 pounds. How can you really complain of that kind of thing? There's a pump noise of less than 28 dBA, which is pretty good and a pump speed of up to 5,300 RPMs. So as far as specifications go, or at least general specifications, it's actually pretty decent. Opening up the box, we can see that we've pretty much got everything that we need. We've got a bit of an instruction manual here, which shows us how to install it. It's just a general thing. We have a box of accessories, which I'm assuming is gonna be the mountings for the fittings. Everything is actually packaged in plastic packaging, which is obviously keeping everything nice. And they've already pre-installed the fans. This is probably the first AIO that I've ever had where they've actually pre-installed the fans so that's actually pretty weird to see and with the packaging removed we can see what we're playing with obviously we have our radiator here with the three fans pre-installed on the front here they are ARGB fans so if we have a look at the connections we've got a standard three pin ARGB connection with a pigtail and when we look at how we power these fans, we have a four pin PWM. So that actually follows suit with the fans that we looked at the other day because they also used standard connections, which we love. And they also had pigtails so you could string things together and you'd need less headers to do it. So it's good that they've included them. The radiator seems pretty thick and decent and it has the thermal right logoing across the side. So that's pretty cool. And then we come to the block and the pump itself. Now this is slightly different to other AIOs that you will get out there because usually what they tend to do is they use the well-known and well-used Acetec design but on this one it's a little bit different and what that means is the pump is not actually in the block itself the block is simply just a cooling unit and then we have these really nice braided pipes all the way down to a block on here now this is where the pump is on this one 
And maybe this is how they've actually kept the design pretty cheap because that means that they're not paying for the licensing for other designs. Also being in the pipes, it means that the pump can actually be pretty quiet because it's not actually mounted to the system. So it's not mounted to your CPU socket and your motherboard, which is mounted to your case, which can sometimes actually cause vibrations to go through the system. Being in the pipes and being at the flexible rubber, it means that any vibration is not going to be felt by anything really. It also means, and I really like this feature, that the, obviously the pump powering wire which is a three pin VC connection is actually mounted all the way up here next to the radiator and that's actually pretty cool because it means you've got less cable management to do by the CPU when you have to have all those cables over. Unfortunately it doesn't get rid of them all because the block itself is actually ARGB. It is an infinity mirror and it does have a thermal ride logo in the middle but it's nice it's nicely presented there's no words and names and stuff like that on there so I actually like that it's 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 nice and clean and I like that kind of design. But of course, being ARGB and having a bit of lighting in it, you will have an ARGB connection that connects to the pump. Now this cable isn't removable, it is fixed. So even if you're not gonna run the ARGB, you're gonna have to hide these cables somewhere. The block itself is actually pretty big. I like a big chunky block because it just really makes your CPU kind of stand out. And the pipes on it are actually flexible. You can adjust them into different directions. The bottom is a nice big copper cold plate that's actually reasonably flat and it does have a little peel sticker on there so you're gonna have to make sure that you remove that but it doesn't actually have any kind of fitting system on it so let's open up the box and see what type of fittings actually come with this. Inside the accessories box they've actually included some nice things They've included a splitter for the fans. Unfortunately, that's in black, but it must just be like a standard box they throw in. You won't really see that if it's in the back of your system, but that allows you to connect the three fans together and then use a single header. So it's nice that they've included that because it means it's not something that you have to actually go and purchase separately. Now, as I said before, this cooler will pretty much fit every socket, including AM5, AM4, AM3, AM2, all of the uh, 115X intel sockets as well as the lga 1200 and lga 1700 so you're pretty much covered for anything that you're kind of doing and it also has a really cool unique feature in terms of how these kind of mount so unlike others where you screw them to the block itself you have a bit of a twist system kind of like the corsair stuff and the nzxt stuff just simply mount this little bracket onto the side onto the rear like that and you give it a twist. Now twisting it should lock the cooler into place and obviously you'll do that when it's into the system and then you can mount it down onto the bracket. Now that is the Intel bracket and I really like these kind of systems. It actually makes them so much easier to put into the systems and remove them and we can simply just click it like that. For the Intel side obviously you get a back plate and then you get a single plate that mounts to the cooler itself. And it's actually pre-built they've put all the pegs in already that will simply go through the motherboard and then with the cooler attached that piece will go on there when it comes to the am4 or the amd socket side where well, they don't actually have a screw down on this one that is a little bit of a shame to see i always like the screw down ones because it means that you can get even pressures on everything but they have actually included the one that's spring loaded on two little brackets so that will actually hook over your am4 um, brackets but the principle is still the same it will simply just go onto the cooler like that and then you will just lock it into place and then you can just install it onto your system. You will need to use the pre-installed clamps in an AM4 board so hopefully you've still got them. Some people do lose them, I have been known or I have seen people that have lost them but you can simply rebuy them if you need to. You can get spares from online, pretty much any retailer. They also include all the screws and brackets you need for the Intel, including little standoffs for the different types of sockets and they're all different heights, but the instruction manual will actually go through which colors you need to use and you actually get some thermal paste. Now, I'm not sure how good thermal right thermal paste is. I've heard that they're pretty decent. I haven't really used it myself. Whenever I've got a cooler from them or something like that, I tend to just, uh, throw it in a box and it's it's a pretty spare one because I tend to use Arctic MX4 but it's good to see that they've included it in there because obviously you will need it when you come to install. Along with all of that if you don't have enough headers to be able to power this particularly the pump side of things they do include a SATA to a header connection so when you get your pump you can just plug it straight in to your power supply. Now I've not had many white components through the studio yet and it's really good to actually have one because I've wanted to do a white build for a while and maybe this will make up part of it. It's going to be a pretty simple system to install just like any other AIO and I am super impressed with the price. They've managed to keep these things so low and it's probably because they're using their own designs and things like that. The fans on these are pretty decent as we've seen in the other video. 
standard connections, they're reasonably quiet. And these ones come with nice little rubber mounted corners, which is absolutely great because it means you're not going to get any vibration against the radiator. You can remove the fans if you want and you can replace them with something else, but I'm not 100% sure why you'd want to do that considering these are so good. And you can also buy matching fans to these for really, really cheap. The white versions of these in packs of three are roughly around £13 currently at the moment, which actually means with this cooler and a bunch more fans, you could fully load your system up with some fantastic cooling for less than £100. Now, in terms of cooling, we're not going to really do any testing. This video was really just to show you guys that there are some options out there for budget gamers. And to be honest, from what I've looked up, they are actually pretty decent. You're going to get pretty decent cooling from this kind of system. There's nothing in there that's abnormal. So it's going to be a pretty good choice. I recommend that if you guys are trying to build a budget system at the moment and you're looking at cooling options, go and check out what Thermalrite have. They also do some fantastic air coolers at amazing prices as well. And because the fan systems or the additional fan systems that you can purchase are so cheap, you can have everything matching and you can get that real premium look for not the premium price. At some point, I'm sure we will actually install this into a system. We'll probably do a nice full white build at some point, or we may actually install it into a benching rig because since having the new CPU in that, it's been a little bit of a pig to cool and this system will have no problem doing it. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you have any thermal right components in your system, let me know what kind of experience you've had. And if you actually have one of these, let me know if you've had any issues or anything that I need to look out for. And we'll catch you in the next one.